What's up? My name is Rami. And today we're going to talk about talent shows. I've seen a lot of comments from you guys telling me that I should go on X Factor or Pop Idol or America's Got Talent or whatever. And actually, I have been approached by a lot of those shows, but I have always turned them down. Do you want to know why? Because talent shows suck ass. So there's this guy called Alan Boyd, who was one of the people who got the first pop idol on TV. And he said some interesting things in an interview, which really explains a lot of what I hate about these shows. Big emotional moments make a show, he believes. Pop idol changed from a singing contest to a story show when Gareth Gates stood before the panel of judges and stuttered before singing like an angel. My name's Gareth. I'm 17. I'd like to be a pop idol because I have a desire to perform. Beauty and the beast. I just have to sell myself now, you know, um, go to the judges, so, um, yeah, so I'm just going to go for it in there, I'm just going to really go for it. My name is, uh, Just take your time. Did you hear them say, take your time? Now listen to this new audition from 2017 and, you know, listen what they're saying. You take your time. And now you're like, oh, Joel, you're wearing the foil hat again. They just said, take your time. That's a totally normal thing to say, right? Watch the next part as well. Everybody's looking for that something. What you've done today is unbelievably brave. Evie, you've been really unbelievably brave with what you've told us tonight. It's just like a f stencil. You just got the same things you say about someone. You just like, put in different people with different problems. This show is not about the contestants because the contestants, they're changed every season. They can't keep those. It is about the judges and people don't realize this. The most obvious way they do this is when they film the judges so much during like sad stories, like them looking like, oh, we feel so bad for you. Like this empathic thing. It's just this function like in the human mind where we're like, oh my God, they're such good people. They care so much about this person, but it's so cynical and so thought out. Here's an example. About a year ago, <laughs> they gave him a 5% chance to live. It doesn't matter that Simon's earning like millions and millions for being on the show while they get like nothing. I still like Simon so much because he looks like this when he's looking at someone who's sad. The worst part is like this girl here is talking about her terminally ill dad and it keeps cutting to Simon and his sponsored Dunkin Donuts cup. It's so gross. Look here, here's the person who's having a tough time and then they cut to like what makes the money instantly. On YouTube, if someone would be doing this kind of like very heavy handed sponsorship talking about like someone dying of cancer, that would be in such poor taste. But they just do it here, it's crazy. Obviously, I empathize with these people with the sad stories and that's not what I'm criticizing. What I am criticizing is the super cynical, gross way that the TV shows are using them. The previous story with the girl with the dying dad was true, but sometimes the stories are totally fabricated. Here's a part of the contract, which is crazy. In exchange for being seen by millions of viewers each week, everyone must agree that producers can trick, exploit, and embarrass them. And the actual contract says, I further understand that my appearance, depiction, and portrayal in the program may be disparaging, defamatory, embarrassing, and may expose me to public ridicule, humiliation, or condemnation. So basically what this contract says is that they have a right to make stuff up about people if they want. You have no way as a contestant to fight back or sue or anything. This is also the biggest reason why I never joined one of these shows. You have no control over anything and there's no guarantees. It's not even likely that the show's goals line up with what you want to do as an artist. One thing that many people don't know is that they actually approach a lot of people for these shows. Like most people like in the finals of American Idol or whatever have not been from open auditions, I think. I've been approached a few times by different shows. I'm not gonna say which shows, but like, for example, one show kept calling me even though I said no, because they were like, oh, but it would be so good. You could come on and you could do your voices and it would be great. And I was like, oh, I don't even have time for that. Like I'm trying to run my YouTube channel and you know, work on original music and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you must've been 
working on blah 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 then, because you have certainly not been releasing that many original songs lately, Rumi. And then she was like, oh, but you can come in and only do the audition. You don't have to be part of the rest. And I was like, okay, so you want me to come in, pretend that I'm trying to be on the show, and then you'll say no, because I wouldn't even join anyways. It just makes me look bad for no reason. Why would I even go on? It's just for their production. Another show called me and had seen the voices videos and they were like, oh, we can fly you wherever you want. You can be in any of our shows in any country. We will pay for your stay. We will pay for your hotel. We'll pay for everything. You can just come and be on the show. You'll skip all the pre-auditions. Everything will be great. And, <laughs> and I was just like, this just feels so fake and wrong. For the other reasons I've been talking about, I wouldn't join anyway. But just getting that offer to go to any country and be part of it without having to audition just felt really weird. The one thing that's always true is that emotional moments on TV don't come naturally. Instead, the shows have to really force them to happen. Here's a C and Duck. 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 Um. <coughs> I, I'm so hoping that you're butchering his name because you were all like. His name is Rami. What the f? How hard is it to say Rumi? Okay, now you have to look it up. Two hours later. He doesn't say his own name in the video, okay. Do that. 100% accurate. Key and Ducrat. Key and Ducrat, okay. Here's Key and Ducrat in his video exposing The Voice UK. The clips of your family screaming at the TV screen saying like, Oh my God, hit the buzzer, turn around. It's filmed completely separately. They give them lines, ask them to say it. Also, the clips of your family talking to you beforehand is completely staged, all filmed, all lighting, all makeup. They told my mom what to say, which was completely not her style. They made her say all this stuff about like, oh, did you forget your socks or your toothbrush? And they were like, can we do another take? Can we do another take? So it seems like most of the candid moments with your family or emotional conversations are scripted and faked most of the time in these shows. They're just exactly what the TV show wants them to be. Just like this video is completely scripted then, Rumi. You f in faker! Most of the time, these are not even well done. They just sound so like soap opera, terrible. Yeah, let's just watch some intros and you'll see. Stage fright is something I've battled with. Someone says no, it's like, for me, it's like, you're not good enough. They've been filming a lot of crying separately and then they can like cut in like. I know your dreams are gonna come true, and I'm just so happy to be part of that. I get to watch. You deserve it. I want to be successful enough to buy my mom a house one day, and I'm willing to do anything it takes to get in one of those chairs. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm here today to get a chair, and my family's here to support me. And I just love them so much. I'm doing this for me and them. Faked moments like that, that seem like it's like you having the most emotional talk with your parents or whatever, ever. It's just, they find an angle and then they write the script for them. Like, I wonder what these people said when they came in. Like, why do you want to do this? It wasn't, oh, I want to buy my mom a house someday. <laughs> that was not the first no, thing you say. It's super scripted. I'm getting trust issues from these. These shows use any means necessary to elevate the TV experience and it's not limited to the drama stuff or the emotional stuff. It's also about the music. Here's a clip from X Factor UK. Every time I go for the telephone, I gotta hold myself down. So I just can't help myself, but it That's so much auto-tune on something that's supposed to be a live performance. It's not even well done. It's terribly done. I mean, I'm not saying that she can't sing. I don't know how it sounded beforehand, but no, 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 no. Don't be shy with your words. She probably sucked. Obviously, not everyone on that show had that amount of auditing on. So something fishy was going on. The newspaper, The Guardian, asked them about this, like, oh, did you use autotune? And this was the official response. A spokesman for the X Factor, while not admitting to the autotune charge, conceded that post-production work was necessary. It was, he said, for the viewer's benefit. Furthermore, it did not affect the judge's decision. One industry insider said that auditing techniques were commonly used, especially in American TV talent shows. Normally, an audience would not notice unless it was used in a particularly heavy-handed way. So basically, they may be auto-tuning everything, but this was just the worst ever. Like, we don't know. So maybe now you're saying, it's entertainment. Lies don't matter in entertainment, it's just to entertain. But if something's only entertaining 
because you think it's real and it's not. We fake the talent, we fake the emotions, we fake the stories, they fake everything. I feel like you're starting to get angry. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need a little refreshment of positive uh, energy here. Uh -huh. I'm gonna show you a picture of a kitten. That's cute. I'm so happy. This is great. All this lying is just great. I love it. One thing they do is actually trigger meltdowns. Here's another quote. We were all in the green room waiting to go out and perform. And there was this young girl from Hawaii who was with her mom. She went out and auditioned. And while she was out there, a producer came back to the holding room and told us, okay, she made it. Let's give her a big hand when she comes back in here. So of course we all shared for her when she came through the door and she just burst into tears. It turns out she didn't actually make it. They just told us that so we'd cheer and they'd get a reaction out of her. The young girl just being triggered into tears by producers. Very nice. Another way to really design drama is to set up people to fail and embarrass themselves. I actually have a friend who I will not name. She was in a talent show and yeah, they made her embarrass herself pretty bad. She went to a pre-edition and the producers watching her said that she was amazing. This is so good. But like, can you amp it up even more? When you come to the judges, do 110% and you'll definitely make it. Some other friends of mine who were more talented than her went and they didn't get through. So she got like, you know, a bit of a confidence boost. She was like, hell yeah. They said I was so great. And then she went on it. And of course, they just wanted to make a fool out of her. And she was on TV. And, you know, I remember her just crying, telling me about this later. It was so insane, like how they had really built her up just so that she would embarrass the shit out of herself. So think about all that manipulation before you judge someone who sings like this. Broken down, he's lost everything. Or this. No, it's real or this <laughs> or this hey hey monica hey what i want to get my main point is these TV shows will do whatever they can to make as much money as possible. They lie and manipulate the audience, they manipulate the contestants, and they use tragedies and sad stories in the most cynical way just so that they can sell more ad space. It's just garbage shows really, like why, why is this still a thing? I don't understand it. Ugh. Well, I do understand it, but I hate it! <laughs> also, thanks for sticking around for the last six months. I really appreciate it. We've done this really cool thing with the channel recently, and I'm so happy you guys have been along for the ride. Jonas, I need to thank you for everything you've done for the channel so far. And like, I just feel really, I feel really grateful that I've been able to do more personality based content on this channel. It feels really great. So thank you so much. I love my job nowadays, which I didn't do all the time before, so. It's great. Also, I've seen in the comments that a lot of you guys want a mug like this. Why the f would anybody want a mug? That's just gonna insult them. And these mugs are available now on my merch site. You can go there. There's a link in the description. There's also a link here. And I will see you next week. Wait, wait. You make a video where you complain about the gross ways that TV shows make money. And in the end, you plug your own merch. You're a disgusting hypocrite. Like, f you, Rumi. What did the sign of an out of business brothel, say. I don't know. Beat it, we're closed. <laughs> no! Big oh. drama in the vlog. Where did Joe put his jacket? The even bigger drama. He walks in with shoes. Ooh! <laughs>